The purpose of this uh, exercise here was to show what um, different amounts of drop will do to the same rider on the same bike, uh, will do to his position and the aerodynamics um, of his body position. Uh, and right off the bat, um, we can see here uh, that I've set up my bike with an adjustable stem and, and raised it all the way up and given myself a, a relatively um, small amount of drop. Now this is not representative of any way that anybody should set themselves up on a frame like this. On a, on a properly fit Cervelo frame, you're going to have to have a, uh, a decent amount of drop, especially if you're a larger rider. Um, that's just the way the frames are designed. But um, let's say that, that I was using this relatively small amount of drop, which in this case is less than uh, 10 centimeters, and, and um, this is a 61 centimeter frame, so it's, it's a large bike, and, and I'm a, a tall rider, about 6'4". Um, so with less than 10 centimeters of drop here, and this is what I would consider the starting point for, for any kind of a, of a uh, halfway decent triathlon position, and it, it's similar to a lot of the positions I see out there. We can see that um, the torso is, is fairly upright here, um, and at a, at a noticeable angle, and that the, the front of the um, torso will be exposed to the wind. It's up at a, a high teens um, degree uh, angle, and that essentially the um, the wind is going to see a good bit of the front of the rider uh, from the torso standpoint, anywhere from say here to here, uh, the wind is going to see, and there's this area. You know, back here behind the rider, with, that's likely to create a lot of turbulence and drag. So this position is is definitely okay for for someone who's um, starting out, um, but it's it's certainly not uh, where we want to be ideally. Where we want to be is the best combination of aerodynamics and comfort and um, power generation always. So, you know, the position is no good if you can't hold it for, for the race distance you're interested in and it's also no good if you can't generate power. Now this position over here represents um, a position with an amount of drop that I consider around the, the sweet spot um, and it varies depending on the size of the rider but um, uh, this is you know somewhere in a, a, a uh, mid-teens percentage drop relative to the seat height. Um, for me Again, we're talking about um, you know maybe 14 centimeters of drop, 15 centimeters of drop, something like that here. Um, and this is a a um, per, an amount of drop that's very typical with the uh, at least the male Kona pros. Um, and this so this is a position very similar to what we see a lot of of them riding. You notice that now the front of the torso um, is essentially flat. Uh, that the wind sees very little of the front of the torso and uh, we don't have this big space behind the rider nearly as big of a space to generate turbulence so there definitely should be some some drag savings here yet this is a comfortable position uh, if set up right uh, it's not a, a degree of drop that should be um, you know uncomfortable this is a position that, that um, that I've ridden in a couple Ironman races and it, it hasn't been a problem at all and it, again like I said it's similar to what we see um, a lot of the pros using uh, in Kona. And we can compare the, uh, the two positions here with the overlay on the left properly. We can see the, uh, the difference in the attitude of the rider's uh, torso uh, as, as the front end is lowered um, and going from you know, this fairly upright, somewhat draggy position to a uh, decent flat but still not um, what I would consider an extreme position or not a position that should be uncomfortable and it's a position that should be with with a uh, modestly forward uh, seat position 78 79 degrees uh, most people will have um, enough hip angle to uh, generate plenty of power at this position now um, for comparison purposes we can uh, go ahead and take a look at what a more extreme uh, position would look like so here now we can see uh, I've, I've got um, my handlebars very low. I've got the pads almost down to level with my top tube here. Uh, the amount of drop is well north of 20% of my saddle height. 
this is a position not unlike something you'd see Buren Anderson using. Um, and you know, it, it's also not unlike uh, positions we see uh, David Zabriskie or some of the other um, Tour de France riders uh, using in the short time trials. And what we can clearly see, the, the difference from this position to this position is, is huge uh, from the standpoint of I've just made my body much smaller from the front. My head is now essentially down below my shoulders and the right aero helmet could blend right into my back. And we could see how this could be an extremely aerodynamic position. Um, the question is, uh, how long is it rideable for? Clearly, it's going to be difficult for the rider to look up the road. Um, and it requires that the rider be extremely far forward on the bike. Um, in, in this position here, in this, I'm sitting at about 82 degrees effective seat angle. And um, it's still not really far, far enough forward. My hip angle is still a bit on the tight side. Uh, so chances are I'd be losing some power here in this position. Uh, and needless to say that this might be a position that, that for most people um, over any distance and certainly if, when you have to run off the bike is not really going to be a, a practical uh, sustainable position. Um, you know, that said, it, it could work for some people and certainly for uh, road time trialists um, who are racing for 30 minutes or less, assuming they can get themselves forward enough over the bottom bracket to open up their hip angle enough, um, this could be a, um, a uh, usable and very aero position. So once again, we can uh, morph the, um, the relatively uh, um, modest drop position uh, into this extreme drop position here and get an idea of the difference. And we can see that essentially what's happening here is that I'm rotating myself around the bottom bracket that, that there isn't much changing as far as um, the relationship of my, my torso to my hips and, and um, my arms um, aren't changing uh, dramatically uh, relative to my shoulders, but just the whole position is being rotated about the bottom bracket. Um, so certainly um, this could be, again, a rideable position, a position that, that, a, that power could be generated uh, if the rider's forward enough. And just for uh, reference, the brisky when he sits in this kind of a position uh, is about several, probably four, five, six centimeters further forward. In fact, uh, he's got his his um, rump essentially lined up with the uh, the front of the seat post on his P3. So I would have to scoot a good bit further forward to get um, that same hip angle. Mm -hmm. So I just happened to have that picture of, uh, of Zabriskie, and um, you can see the similarities in the position, but as, you, as I said, you can see just how far forward he actually sits in this position to get uh, his hip angle open enough to generate power. And if we would approximate you know, where his sit bones are, let's say you know, 84 degrees, something like that, he's sitting at, whereas in this shot, I've probably got myself at about 82. So I need to come a couple degrees further forward, probably. Uh, everybody's a little bit different, but but you know probably like I said, three to five centimeters further forward on the saddle to uh, to really get optimal power generation in this position. And you know once again, um, not something that that most triathletes are are going to be interested in. It's not really going to be a practical position for most triathletes, especially over any great distance.